Before I start talking about this, I just want to add two disclaimers. One is that for those of you that have been subscribed to me, I think I have mentioned the fact that I am about to be a nurse practitioner. However, I am not a therapist, I am not a psychologist, and I am not a psychiatrist. The other thing is that the way that I speak with myself is very realistic. I'm not necessarily hard on myself, I kind of am, but what I'm saying is that basically I can't give you advice that I have not given to myself and in order to change the way that you look at overthinking and more importantly rumination, it's like I need to actually tell you like what was going on in my mind. Rumination requires like a different perspective. It requires you to alter the framework from which you look at things. And if you have ruminated on something and overcome it, you know that. You know that what really changed first and foremost was your mind, was the way that you were looking at it. I don't want to seem like I'm being insensitive to whoever's watching this. I just want to let you know, like, you know, that's that's how I had to speak with myself. So mindfulness. In order to really approach it the most effective way, you need to understand what it is. So mindfulness is the gentle guidance of your mind to acknowledge the thoughts that you are having to be able to realize when they occur and to look at them without a judgment without looking at it either negatively or positively true or false you train your mind to do that with meditation because in order to dip into meditation you need to not fight your thoughts you need to actually let them come up and the way i like to think of it is that when the thoughts come up i like to literally imagine the sentence in my mind, like on the screen of my mind, and I look at it. When you do that, you're gonna see that a lot of the time, it goes away. If you do that when you're overthinking something, I guarantee it's like the thought fades away. It almost dissipates. You don't even know what to do with it. It doesn't really become interwoven into this whole intricate system of thoughts that are going to spiral. Another thing you can do is count count in your head this is something i caught my mind doing automatically a few days ago i was going up the stairs i noticed that my mind started to overthink but before i could consciously even do this i started counting becomes used to a response and like become like habituates it looking back on it really how i started to approach it was that i basically put a surveillance camera on my mind i've said before in a video about discipline to watch yourself and I said to watch your mind, this is what I meant. I like, I literally paid so much attention to my mind cause I like, it was that I had so much going on in my life. Like I didn't trust my thoughts to just run rampant. So I paid attention to it. So it's almost, it's weird when you think about it this way, it's almost like detachment in a way. In order to detach from your feelings, attach to them, look at them. You're gonna see it's almost, they can't, even formulate like i said i like to think of literally like a surveillance camera on my mind the mind is not very straightforward it has a very abstract way a very abstract perceptive perspective of looking at things so practicing mindfulness it's like you're kind of putting a more concrete frame of reference onto the mind and it's like the mind gets stunned from it and what i mean by this literally is okay so when you're not being mindful, like you're not aware of the thoughts you're having. The thoughts that you're having, they don't always arrive in words. They arrive in symbols, they arrive in feelings, they arrive in meaning, something that we gave meaning to. So when you're watching your mind and you're really focusing on looking at a sentence in your mind, the mind, like I said, it doesn't really know what to do with it because your mind can't run rampant in, th in thoughts that are structured in sentence form. Do you know what I mean? By paying attention to that and catching it in the moment, you stun it, you stun the mind. So like I said, the best way to approach anything is to understand what it is, like to learn about it. So the best advice that I can give you really, aside from mindfulness, is to learn, is to learn about the mind. You don't have to understand everything, just like your heart, just like your digestive system. It is an organ. By understanding this, you understand your thoughts. You understand how they are not real. You understand how to look at them as something that you don't have to react to. And by react, I mean reenact, like literally react. You don't have to take action based on your thoughts. Listen, the neurologic system is difficult to study. It is. Learning about the brain, I don't wanna say like you dissociate from the brain, 
But again, you understand that your thoughts are not you. Your thoughts are not necessarily reality. Your thoughts don't have to turn into something that they aren't. Go listen to Andrew Huberman. Go listen to Jordan Peterson. Go listen to anybody, anybody, but the anonymous member on Reddit telling you what is wrong with you. They will somehow give you a diagnosis. Now, honestly, I feel that these people should be sued for impersonating a medical professional. Like I think about it and I'm like, how would you feel if I impersonated one of the people from court and came up to your doorstep and sued you for doing that on Reddit? I, I saw that stuff really annoys me. It really, really annoys me because like I said, I'm in the medical profession. You will never catch me on Reddit telling someone what they have. I, I don't understand why that is legal. I don't understand why that is allowed. Like I am careful with what I even say on here because I understand that I'm on YouTube, I'm on a public platform and that anybody can see what I'm saying and that I don't personally know them. And it's like, not only that, I don't have the jurisdiction to be sitting here and giving somebody a medical diagnosis. So with that being said, don't let someone on Reddit who doesn't know a thing about you really start telling you or start getting in your mind about what it is that you are dealing with or experiencing. Either call your primary care provider, call your therapist, Call a friend, call a family member. Go listen to a podcast about the brain before you listen to somebody on Reddit who for all you know is projecting things that they have been through on their life onto whoever is behind the screen because they like to believe that everybody is a narcissist or that everybody is an anxious avoidant because they got rejected a few times in their life. And for all you know, they're sitting home giving medical advice to people when they have not taken a single course in the medical field. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't. Don't do that. Now, the other thing, and this pertains more to ruminating on the past, listen, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself the way that you would forgive anybody else in your life. The same way that if someone did something you didn't like, you, if you chose to forgive them, you know that it is because you were looking at them and all of their potential and everything that they could be capable of fixing. You acknowledged all of that and chose to forgive them out of love. Do the same thing with yourself. Realistic is not dismissing what you have done, but it's also not sitting here and badgering yourself with it either. Forgive yourself the way that you would forgive other people. Look at it, rationalize with it, intentionally, mindfully rationalize with it. Look at every reason that you have to forgive yourself because believe me, it is there. And if you can do that for other people, you can do that for yourself. Stop telling yourself all of the negative but I'm not necessarily saying to be falsely positive with yourself. No, when you, like I said, when you forgive somebody, you're looking at the situation from a third party objective and you're looking for every reason that you have to forgive them, to give them the benefit of the doubt. Do that with yourself. You are doing nothing by sitting here and hating yourself because of whatever it is that you did. That's not gonna fix anything. It's not. And if someone is making you feel that, it is going to fix everything with them it's because they're manipulating you a lot of the time because otherwise do not continue to be in your life if someone is sitting here and constantly telling you what you did wrong or whatever and even if you did lose somebody even if someone did decide to leave your life because of something that you have done the best apology to yourself to others and more importantly to yourself is change behavior look at what you did the way that you would provide guidance to a child, provide that guidance to yourself. Like I said, be realistic. That doesn't mean turning a blind eye to the positive. It doesn't mean turning a blind eye to the negative and understand that you are not omniscient. You are not God. You are not supposed to be God. You are supposed to come here and learn and pick yourself back up from it. And you know what? That is the most rewarding thing that you can do for yourself and for other people that have either been in your past or for people that will come into your future. Understand that every human makes mistakes. But anything, look at it as that you are capable of being accountable and you are capable of taking responsibility and acknowledging your own faults. Because many people are not capable of doing that. Many people don't even want to do that. Many people don't want to go down that road. You know what? You just took the first step in the right direction. Look at it that way. When people have the courage to really look at themselves, to heal what is inside of them, they're gonna do one of two things. Either they're going to leave peacefully or 
they're going to stay in your life and like I said, choose to move forward with you and forgive you. They're not gonna forget what you did. They're going to be able to discuss it with you, but they're going to do so in a way that is loving and caring. And they're going to do so in a way that is patient and understanding. They're not gonna sit here and put you down every single day. They're not going to do that. Train the voice in your mind that is giving you all this judgment to be you, not other people. The next thing is, like I said before, society likes to literally demonize prioritizing ourselves and, listen, and listening to ourselves unless we somehow are able to fit it into a category that makes sense to people who are coming out into the world trying to make everything sensible. Those are the last type of people you should listen to. You know what? Be the bad person. And I say that because you perceive what is the bad person in your mind at this point, a lot of us do, to be someone that values themselves over other people because they're choosing their own peace of mind. So you know what? Be the person that chooses their peace of mind. People who don't care about you from your past, no matter what, they're always gonna have something to say. They're always going to have two cents to place somewhere. They're not going to, like, you cannot sit here and people please people. You cannot sit here and inhibit yourself because you feel that you should because of people from your past. Not everybody's perfect. So when you choose to be true to yourself, because that is the only thing at the end of the day, authenticity inside of you, who you are, true to yourself, that is the only thing that is going to save you and really keep you resilient in any situation. By becoming your own inner authority, you know that you were able to look at decisions and you trust every decision you make because you are coming from a place of informed judgment on that decision. So whatever you do to try to move on from the situation, to try to leave behind the situation, you know what? They had something to say about you no matter what back then. They're going to have something to say about whatever you do now. So yeah, you might as well do what is most beneficial for you. And that is pursuing your own life path and doing what is going to make you happy. Not thinking about the past, forcing yourself to restrict yourself. No, if people want to say that you're this, that you're such a horrible person, then good, let them. And again, this is an arrogance. This is again, making decisions making informed decisions, decisions that come from a place of you being able to critically think about the outcome of such decisions and to also critically think about how it's going to affect other people. If you are not intentionally negatively impacting other people and they feel negatively impacted by it, ask yourself why they do without looking at yourself. Look at them. You will quickly see why they are so triggered or so annoyed or so affected by it. You are not responsible for their happiness. They are. They are, just like you are responsible for your own happiness, they are responsible for their own happiness. However, they are not able to live up to that responsibility. They are not able to assume that responsibility for themselves, so they are constantly depending on other people to fulfill it for them. So they depend on other people to do what makes them comfortable and to do what makes them okay with themselves. So you know what, like I said, be the bad person then. It's not necessarily the bad person to you, I'm saying, be the bad person in their in their eyes. They want to analyze you, analyze them. You'll, you'll get all the clarity you need. Everyone can make their own decisions. People who do not choose themselves want you to choose them and want you to do everything that is going to only benefit them because they are unable to do that for themselves. The other thing that you need to understand is that the world is reciprocal. And what I mean by this is that what happened from your past is not going to be your future. When you are able to stop ruminating on the past and when you are able to really come to terms with forgiving yourself and improving yourself in any way that you can and continuing on with life trust that life is going to reward you with things that you deserve because you did that when you are able to take accountability for your actions and work on them and improve them intentionally improve them trust that the world is going to reciprocate that back to you the world is going to give that back to you when you focus on yourself the world will almost seem to focus back on you because you are being intentional about everything you're doing and because you were able to stop ruminating you were able to really productively think about you and the decisions that you're going to make moving forward when you look at yourself and you focus on yourself and you work on yourself the world is going to give that back to you i promise you that you can sit here and you can be as stubborn as you want i was too i'm telling you right now believe that Another thing to really look at, whether you were right or whether you were wrong, and you know what, the answer to this might be yes, but let's look at it this way. Listen, were you happy? And even if the answer to that is yes, were you 100% happy? Were you 100% content? And by happiness, I mean you feel it in your heart and you also feel it in your mind. Remember, the body sends emotions to your mind and then you think about them and then you start having feelings about them. 
were you at peace of mind with these people or in this situation or at this place, wherever, were you happy? Were you happy with that past? Were you genuinely happy? What did you lose from that past? Really, seriously, what did you lose? Even if you feel that you did lose something worth having, even if you feel that you were happy, do you honestly think that that is where life ends? Do you honestly think that you cannot have better? Do you honestly think that you could not be happier? Write down all the reasons why you were not happy. Seriously, look at the situation without becoming absorbed in it and ask yourself, looking at that situation, were you happy? And like I said, if you were 97% happy, why can't you be 100% happy? Why can't there be more for you to look forward to? Understand that things don't work out for a reason. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's a difference between people wanting the best for you and wanting the best for themselves. You have to understand that. Ask yourself, was this situation, this relationship, this whatever, was it in your best interest? Did it live up to your fullest potential? Even if it did satisfy you, was it up to the full potential that you believe that you deserve, that you are capable of having? Seriously ask yourself that. Before you ever let anybody tell you that you cannot have better, there is better out there and that you can really pursue whatever you want to pursue. And you know what? At least you're trying. At least you're working towards that every day. You have to understand that, you know, the past, look at it as a reference point. Look at it as a reference point for what you might want in your future, but for what more you could have. A lot of the time you might think that it did live up to your full expectations and to your full satisfaction when you really sit down and you really truly ask yourself that question from a place of emotional detachment you have to understand that no there's always better than what has gone because when things leave our life it's because we did play a role somewhat in its downfall to some extent perhaps and so we did that for a reason because we weren't fully satisfied and even if it was not in your control, understand that you don't want anything that leaves you. Understand that you don't want anything that you have to second guess about. Understand that you don't want that. It is not made for you. It is not meant for you. You can have better than anything that has gone. And that is a fact. You might not think so because that's all you know thus far. It made you feel some way, some positive way back then. Maybe you had a positive outlook on it back then or now, but the thing to understand is that you're being closed-minded. You're not actually seeing the world in its totality and realizing that, yeah, you can have better.